Hey Reddit, I'm Jake. Coming to you not because I want to, but because I need a place to spill everything that's been eating at me. I'm a 38-year-old guy, a software engineer by trade, and up until recently I thought I was living the dream here in the heart of Austin, Texas. You know the kind of life they show in those feel-good family movies? That was mine, or so I thought. I've been hitched to Liz since we were both too young to know any better. High school sweethearts who made it all the way. We built a life together that seemed pretty picture perfect. We have two amazing kids, a golden retriever named Duke that's as dopey as he is adorable, and a home that's the envy of our quiet suburban street. But here's where it gets less picture perfect. Lately Liz has been acting kind of off. She's an advertising executive, which means her job's as demanding as a newborn always needing something and keeping her up at weird hours. It used to be the occasional late night, but now it's like she's got a second shift that only starts once the kids' bedtime stories are done. It's strange, you know? She used to be all about family game nights and weekend hikes, but now there's always an excuse. Big project, she says, or client dinner. But these excuses are piling up like the dirty laundry in our to-be-folded basket. And it's not just that she's missing out on family time, it's the little things too like how her phone has turned into some top secret gadget she guards with her life. And me? I'm the kind of guy who likes to give people their space. I trust easily, or I guess I used to. But even I can't ignore the nagging feeling that something's not right. I've always been curious, the kind of guy who needs to know how everything works, from the code in my day job to the mystery novels I devour at night. So, when things started not adding up, that part of me that needs to know it kicked in. I tried to shake it off, thinking maybe it was just the seven-year itch coming a few years late. We've been married for 15, but who's counting? Hey everyone. Unfortunately, basically everyone who is watching these videos isn't subscribed. It would mean the world to me to quickly get out of the full screen video for three seconds and press that subscribe button. It's free and you can unsubscribe anytime. Sorry for bothering and thank you so much if you subscribed. But no matter how much I told myself that I was just being paranoid, the feeling wouldn't go away. It was like this constant buzz in the back of my head, and folks, I just couldn't ignore it any longer. So, there you have it. My perfect life starting to look a little frayed around the edges, and as I sit here typing this out, I can't help but wonder if I'm just seeing things that aren't there, or if the life I thought I knew is about to unravel. Stay tuned, I guess. This is just the beginning, and something tells me it's about to get a whole lot rockier. Alright, Reddit, it's Jake again. You know how in those detective shows, the smallest clue starts unraveling the whole mystery? Well, I think I've stumbled onto my own little crime scene, except it's in the form of credit card statements and receipts. It began with a couple of charges on our credit card, nothing big, just a few bucks here and there. But they were for places I couldn't recall us going to together, like that fancy downtown sushi place Liz always said was too exotic for her taste. I'd find the statements tucked in our mail pile, these silent little alarms that only I could hear ringing. Then came the receipts. I found one crumpled at the bottom of her car, you know, like it was trying to hide from me. It was for a pair of men's sunglasses, the kind you need a week's salary to buy. My birthday was months away, and our son is 10, so who in the world was Liz buying these for? And have you ever noticed how names start popping up? Out of nowhere, Alex started making guest appearances in Liz's work anecdotes. Alex did this, or Alex thinks that. At first, it was just another name, like Steve from Accounting or Jenny from HR. But this Alex guy, he was like a recurring guest star climbing his way to a main role. My gut was ringing the alarm louder than ever. It wasn't like I was snooping around corners in some trench coat. These things were just there, and I was starting to add them up. I began to notice how her eyes darted away a little too quickly when I asked how her day went, or how she'd suddenly start typing frantically when I walked past her home office. I'm a logical guy, okay? I solve problems for a living. But emotions, man, they can throw you for a loop. I felt like I was living in a fog. Everything seemed normal on the outside, but my insides were twisted up like a Rubik's Cube. It was like that feeling you get when you know you're about to get hit with a plot twist you never saw coming. You feel it in your bones. 
So I did what any guy with a hunch and a little too much curiosity would do. I started paying more attention to everything. The sound of her laughter a little too late into the night while texting, the way she'd quickly shut down her laptop whenever I came close, the extra effort she was putting into her looks. It was all adding up to a story I wasn't sure I wanted to read the ending to. So, there you have it folks, suspicions were creeping in, and I was starting to feel like the side character in my own life story. Next step? Guess I had to do a bit more digging. You ever had a moment that feels like it's straight out of a movie? Yeah, well, I had mine, and trust me, it was no blockbuster hit. It was more of a horror show. It was a regular Tuesday evening, and my phone had just died mid-call due to a charger that's as unreliable as a screen door on a submarine. I needed to make a call, so I did the natural thing and asked Liz if I could use hers. She hesitated for a split second before handing it over, her fingers lingering on the device like she was saying goodbye to a loved one. That should have been clue number one. I punched in the number and brought the phone to my ear, waiting for the dial tone. That's when it happened. A text notification popped up. Can't wait for our next rendezvous, love. A. My heart stopped doing its job for a second, guys. Rendezvous? Love? A? As in Alex? Now I'm not proud of it, but curiosity bulldozed over privacy and respect in that moment. I opened the message thread and there it was. The evidence of Liz's secret life spelled out in texts, emails, and photos. Photos, Reddit. Of my Liz, and this Alex, closer than two coats of paint. It felt like I was on one of those drop tower rides, free falling from a hundred feet up. There was anger, yeah, the hot fierce kind that makes you want to punch walls. Betrayal, like a knife in the gut, twisting with every new message I read. And sadness, this heavy damp blanket that settled over me. The texts dated back months, each one a breadcrumb leading to the undeniable truth that Liz wasn't just working late. They talked about meetings when she was supposedly at yoga, and those business trips might as well have been romantic getaways. I must have stood there for ages, just scrolling through the proof that my marriage was a sham. The air in the room got tight, suffocating. It was too much to process. The woman I'd built my life with, the mother of my children, was sharing parts of herself with someone else parts that were supposed to be for me, for us. I finally snapped out of it when I heard the front door open, kids coming back from soccer practice. I locked the screen, handed the phone back to Liz with a smile that I'm sure didn't reach my eyes, and muttered some excuse about the call not going through. But inside, inside, I was a chaos of thoughts and emotions, a storm that was just picking up strength. How could she? How long had this been going on? What did this Alex offer that I didn't? Questions punched me from every side, each one leaving me reeling. So, there it was. The accidental discovery that shattered my normalcy into a million sharp pieces. I had to figure out what to do next, but in that moment, all I could do was pretend everything was fine while I was bleeding on the inside. Hey Reddit, it's Jake here again. After my world turned into a daytime soap opera, I did what any tech-savvy, heartbroken guy would do. I went full detective mode. It wasn't just about knowing the truth anymore. It was about understanding how deep this rabbit hole went. I dove into the digital sea without a second thought. I'm talking about deep dives here, past the point where the water turns dark. And let me tell you, the internet is a treasure trove of information if you know where to look. Thanks to some snooping skills and a couple of well-placed searches, I found out that Alex was more than just a name. He was married too, to Valerie, who owns a bakery. I passed by on my way to work, the one with the amazing cinnamon rolls. It was like one of those twists that you never see coming. Not only was Liz entangled in this mess, but there was another life, another heart on the line, Valerie's. I couldn't help but wonder if she had any idea who she was really married to. Every night I sat in my home office, clicking through pages, searching through social media, and getting the lay of the land. Screenshots, timestamps, everything was evidence. And as much as my heart felt like it was being trampled on, my brain was firing on all cylinders. I had to know it all. No half-truths, no doubts, just cold, hard facts. But here's the kicker. Amidst all this James Bond-level espionage, I found myself wrestling with something unexpected. 
The memories of the good times with Liz kept playing in my mind like some sappy movie montage. I remembered the way she laughed at my bad jokes, the way her nose crinkled when she was focused, the warm feeling of her hand in mine. I still loved her, or at least I loved the person I thought she was. And that, folks, made my desire for revenge taste bitter. I sat there many nights, a lone figure in the dim light of my computer screen, battling the urge to confront Liz with the juggernaut of proof I'd compiled. But something in me needed to wait for the perfect moment, for that instance when the impact would be just right. I knew that rushing into this would just unleash chaos. It's a weird place to be, floating in limbo between love and vengeance. I knew I couldn't let this slide, yet part of me wanted to just scream and make it all stop, to wake up from this nightmare. So, I plotted my next move in silence, thinking about Valerie and how she fit into all this. I could blow up Liz and Alex's little fantasy world, but what about the collateral damage? It was a tangled web, and I was right at the center trying to figure out which thread to pull that wouldn't unravel me in the process. I've got to figure this out, Reddit. For now, I'm the silent observer, the keeper of secrets that aren't even mine. But not for long. Something's got to give, and when it does, I'll be right here, updating you all on the fallout. This story's far from over, and I get the feeling it's going to get a lot messier before there's any chance of cleaning it up. Stay tuned. If you've ever braced yourself for impact before a crash, you'll know the anxious calm that comes before the storm. Well, I was in the eye of that storm, sitting across from Liz at what she thought was an impromptu dinner to celebrate our love. Ironic, right? I picked the spot our favorite little Italian place, the scene of many anniversaries and whispered I love yous, the kind of joint where the candles flicker just enough to make you forget the world outside. I wanted the setting to be just right, playing the part of the doting husband one last time. As we settled into the familiar rhythm of mealtime banter, I felt like an actor in a twisted play. Liz was all smiles, talking about the kids' latest shenanigans, completely oblivious to the script change the weight of the evidence in my pocket was like a leaden audience, waiting for the final act. Then, as dessert arrived, a tiramisu, her favorite, I let the silence hang between us before speaking. My voice was steady, but there was a tremor inside that betrayed my calm exterior. Liz, we need to talk. About us, about honesty, about Alex. The name hit the air like a cold front. Her smile froze then melted into a confused frown. Alex? What about him? Here it was, the moment of truth. I told her, ah, uh, point blank, no sugarcoating. I know about the affair, Liz. Her reaction was a symphony of denials and deflections. She threw everything at me, shock, outrage, and then the classic move, turning the tables. She accused me of neglect, of being too wrapped up in my own world, Maybe if you paid a little more attention at home, I wouldn't have. But I wasn't some greenhorn fresh off the turnip truck. I was ready for this. I've got proof, Liz. Don't do this. The moment those words left my mouth, the air shifted. The walls of denial came crumbling down, and the truth stood naked between us. She knew the jig was up. But even then, her guilt was swaddled in layers of justifications. She spoke of loneliness, of feeling unappreciated, as if that made it all okay. I listened to her, every word a nail in the coffin of our marriage. She cried, she pleaded, and a part of me wanted to comfort her, to make it all go away. But that part was a ghost now, a memory of a man who thought he had it all. The dinner ended not with a toast, but with a quiet understanding that things were never going to be the same. We drove home in a silence that was louder than any argument. As we walked through the door of what was once our sanctuary, it felt like crossing the threshold into a new world. A colder, lonelier one. So there it was, Reddit. Confrontation had come a magon. The aftermath? That's a storm yet to come. I'm not looking for forgiveness, nor am I in the mood to give it. But I'm looking for closure, for the next step in a dance I never wanted to learn. Reddit. Jake checking in. When you're pushed to the brink, they say you either break or become someone you didn't know you could be. I stood at that edge, 
looking into an abyss that was my busted up heart and bruised ego. And in that darkness, I found a cold resolve I didn't recognize as my own. I wasn't going to just lash out wildly. No, my plan had a target. Valerie, Alex's unsuspecting wife. It was a calculated move, like moving a pawn in a game of chess that's turned all too real. Valerie, with her apron dusted in flour and the warm smile she gave to every customer who walked into her bakery, had no idea the life she had baked for herself was about to crumble. I started by becoming a patron, another face in the morning rush, ordering coffee and the occasional cinnamon roll. Small talk turned into real conversations, her guard dropping like leaves in fall. As days turned into weeks, I learned about her life, her dreams, and the space Alex occupied in them. Valerie was as genuine as they come, a stark contrast to the deceit I'd lived with. The guilt of what I was about to do pricked at me, but vengeance was a river that had already burst its banks within me. One day, as she handed me my usual, I let slip a seemingly innocent question. So, how's Alex finding his new job? Must be tough with all those late nights. Her eyes flickered with something I recognized, a mix of confusion and concern, a seed of doubt planted. Each visit after, I watered that seed with offhand comments about how demanding the advertising world can be, how it's notorious for close working relationships. Valeria's smiles didn't reach her eyes anymore, her laughter a half beat off. And then I got a bit bolder, mentioning a friend who saw Alex out in places no married man should be if he's working late. Nothing concrete, just enough to gnaw at her. Watching her, I felt like I was looking at a reflection of my own pain. Valerie's sunny demeanor clouded over with suspicion. She was piecing together a puzzle she didn't want to complete. This wasn't the me that helped old ladies cross the street or who'd always prided himself on playing fair. But fair had left the building the moment Liz chose Alex, so I became the storm. I thought I was trying to weather, not realizing that I was now caught in its spin too. Retaliation was sweet, but it left a bitter aftertaste. I was dragging Valerie into the mud that Liz and Alex had slung, yet I couldn't stop, not when I was this close to exposing the lies for what they were. So here I am, Reddit, the Avenger in a twisted plot of my own making, waiting for the dominoes to fall. And fall they will. When the truth comes out, and it will, it's going to be a reckoning. And I'll be standing right there, watching the house of cards I helped topple. The moment of truth came like a reckoning, cold, hard, and without fanfare. I sent Valerie an anonymous package, the kind you see in those spy flicks, loaded with proof of the affair, printed emails, pictures, and a burner phone with texts. My hands didn't even shake as I dropped it in the mail. It felt like justice, like some cosmic scale tipping back into balance. Days passed. Each sunrise was a question, every sunset an unanswered echo in the void. Had she received it? What was she doing about it? I played it cool on the outside, but inside I was a mess of wires, live and sparking with anticipation. Then it happened. Valerie confronted Alex. The confrontation wasn't quiet or contained, it was a spectacle. A dam breaking in public for all to see. And as these things tend to do in the digital age, it exploded on social media. Alex's infidelity was laid bare for the world to see, the hashtags a banner of their shame. And Liz. Liz got caught in the fallout. Friends, family, colleagues, they all saw it. The picture-perfect life she'd presented to the world was now smeared with the brush of scandal. I watched it unfold like a bystander at a car crash, unable to look away. The likes, shares, and comments piled up. People who had nothing to do with our lives threw their two cents in, fueling the fire. Liz's secret life was now trending, and there was a twisted part of me that felt satisfied. It was the satisfaction of a plan coming to fruition, of a wound being cauterized by the very flames that caused it. But as I watched, something unexpected happened. My taste for revenge soured. I saw Liz breaking down, her world imploding, and despite everything, I felt a stab of remorse. Was it for her, for what our family was going through, or for the man I had become? I couldn't tell you. 
I saw the hurt in my kids' eyes as whispers reached their school. The confusion as they tried to reconcile the image of their mother with the actions of the stranger she'd become. Valerie, strong yet shattered. Valerie tried to keep her composure as her personal life became public spectacle. Alex, the man I thought I despised, was just a husk, a figure of public ridicule and pity. This wasn't justice, it was chaos, the kind that stains and lingers, and I was the architect of that chaos. So there I was, Reddit standing in the ruins of what I'd set into motion, a Pyrrhic victory at best. I had wanted to shake Liz to her core, make her feel a fraction of the pain I had felt. But this? This was a wildfire that I had no control over. This was the reveal, the grand climax of my plot for revenge. And let me tell you, it was nothing like I thought it would be. I guess they say be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And now I understand why. Hey Reddit, it's Jake here for what feels like the final chapter of a book I never wanted to read. After the storm of the reveal, after watching everything I once held dear crumble, I did the only thing I could. I started picking up the pieces, I filed for divorce, there was no dramatic showdown, no tearful argument, just papers signed with a quiet resignation to the end of a chapter in both our lives. It was the closing of a door, the turning of a key in a lock that won't be opened again. In the silence that followed, I focused on what mattered most, my kids. We spent evenings and weekends together, reconnecting and rebuilding the trust that had been shaken by the earthquake of betrayal. I became a better father, not out of some newfound sense of duty, but out of love, pure and unfiltered. I've been sharing updates on here, Reddit, and you've all been a part of this journey with me. You've seen me at my lowest, my most vengeful, and now you're seeing me as I learn to stand again. The comments, the messages of support, they've been a lifeline on the darkest days. Friends and family, well, they've been a mix of confusion and support. Some pat me on the back telling me I did the right thing, while others look at me with eyes that scream, how could you? But they all agree on one thing, it's time to heal, to move forward, and healing. It's a strange process, it's not linear, not some neat path from A to B. It's a tangled mess of good days and bad days, of anger that fades into sadness, only to be replaced by a tentative hope. I've learned a lot about life, about love, and about trust. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but they don't tell you how much it hurts before you get there. I've got scars, sure, but I've also got a clearer view of who I am and what I want out of life. My perspective has shifted. Love isn't just about the good times, it's about honesty, respect, and holding on, even when the going gets tough. Trust isn't given freely, it's earned, and once broken, it's not easily mended. But here's the kicker, folks. I still believe in love. I still believe in second chances. I'm not the same man I was, and I wouldn't want to be. I'm wiser, sure, and a bit more cautious with my heart, but I'm also more understanding, more empathetic. I've seen the depths of my own darkness, and I've come out the other side. So what's next for me? I'm not entirely sure, but I do know this. I've got a future to build, and it's going to be on my terms. A future where I'm a better man, a loving father, and someday maybe a partner who can trust and be trusted in return. Reddit, you've been with me through this whole ordeal. You've watched as I've navigated these troubled waters, and I can't thank you enough. I'll probably take a step back from the updates, focus on living rather than recounting. But know this, I'm not bowing out. I'm stepping up, facing the sun, and moving forward. And hey, maybe one day, I'll come back to share a new story, hopefully a better one. Thanks for watching, and if you would subscribe to this channel, that would mean the world to me. Have a great rest of your day or night.